If you haven't seen my earlier videos then I should explain that the IFOS is a budget light spectrometer which I built to test the light emitted by my LED grow lights. The prototype worked so well that I decided to commercialise it and I've been selling it online for many months. It goes for £49 and up. Its design includes 3D printed parts made from PLA plastic and this fabrication method means I can make complex parts at home without tooling costs or involving external contractors. I'm certainly not getting rich but it is easing the grinding poverty somewhat. Anyway, Sarah is an IFOS customer and she wrote to me to point out a problem she'd found. She took this spectrum snapshot using her IFOS. It's a spectrum from a hot gas source radiating predominantly in the infrared and she points out that the uh, spectral lines on the right hand side are too wide, they're smeared out, they're not in good focus. Then she said, I grabbed an 808 nanometer non-collimated laser diode I used for pumping a green laser. <laughs> kudos Sarah, kudos. Well it confirmed the problem, this should be a very narrow band and it isn't, it's smeared again. Sarah fixed the problem by making a makeshift slip plate from paper and as you can see that completely removes the problem and along the way it also confirmed what the source of the problem was PLA is partially transparent to some infrared radiation I didn't find this problem in my tests because the only infrared radiation source I used was a TV remote control that's relatively low intensity and didn't show the problem anyway the fix is very straightforward you spray um, with paint uh, all of the surfaces that you don't want to be opaque that's done on the inside of the spectrometer so um, there's no impact on its cosmetics and it's a perfect solution I emailed all the customers offered um, compensation no one no one took me up on it and of course it's worth pointing out it doesn't affect um, anything except infrared radiation so if you're not doing analyses in that part of the spectrum you'll never see the problem Sarah also showed me some of the things she's doing with her IFOS. Here she shines a 275 nanometer UV light source um, on a synthetic ruby and shows me the spectrum which the IFOS analyzes. She also gave me some fantastic ideas on product development um, and she mocked them up in, um, in a 3D visualizing package. Here's um, an idea of hers for analyzing liquids um, which you can fit to the front of the IFOS. You can find more of Sarah's ideas online. And thanks once again for helping out with the IFOS. The IFOS, by the way, now has customers all over the world. I've corresponded with some fascinating people doing wonderful things in their own homes. There's a really innovative eco lighting system company using the IFOS to analyse the output from their lighting systems. Many of the IFOSs I've sold have gone to academic institutions, universities, and schools. A few customers are opticians or sellers of eyewear who want to demonstrate the effects of the various lens tints they've got to their customers. Quite a few indoor growers testing the lighting environment that they're growing in and the efficiency and accuracy of the LED lights they're, they're purchasing. And one has been sold to a doctor of physics who works at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Hmm. Anyway, there's your IFOS update. If you're an IFOS customer and you're doing something interesting with yours, I'd love to hear from you. I may be able to feature you in a future video. If you're not an IFOS customer and you think you might be interested, then there'll be links in the description below. And if you don't fall into either of those camps, then, well, I hope you found uh, something of interest in this video. And in any event, thanks for watching.